you make a white locally in Denmark. I will cover you with pepper. I even accuse my husband of sneaking spice in the pants while I was cooking. The dishes have even raised. video for this video I got a question and answer session with questions that you my awesome followers on Instagram sent me if you are not following me on Instagram yet you have been missing out the chance to satisfy your curiosity but fear not because there will be more Q&A sessions in the future so just hit the button follow on Instagram and stay tuned that said let's dive into it for the first question I have why did you move to Denmark was it something you always wanted to do we've always dreamed about living in another country we had that desire in our hearts for years just when we were all settled down in Portugal and comfortable in our home after our wedding circumstances aligned and out of nowhere it was almost as if God was saying Denmark here you go with no objections and here we are basically another question what cultural differences have you observed between Portugal and Denmark? Oh, there are quite a few differences. For example, here in Denmark, people can appear a little bit more reserved initially, but from my experience, after the first contact, they become really friendly and community-oriented. In Portugal, people might come across as more outgoing, but when you really need a help, they tend to be a little bit less dependable. Another difference, for example, is Danish punctuality. It's almost like a superpower, and if you are late, you might as well be from another planet. In Portugal, we have a little bit more flexibility with time, and people usually arrive late. I'm part of that group, yeah, it's my trademark. <laughs> Next question! Have you faced any language barriers and how did you handle them? Absolutely! Even though almost every day speak English like a pro, a few don't. I remember a time on a bus when I pressed the stop button and the driver didn't stop and basically just kept rolling and I tried to explain in English that he had passed my stop but he didn't get my English cries and he, he wasn't understanding anything and eventually he dropped me off a few stops later like 20 minutes from my final destiny whole part of the adventure, right? Next question! What Danish lifestyle or traditions have you embraced or found interesting? Okay, so one of their biggest traditions, which I really love, is the way that they celebrate Christmas. From the festival markets to the special decorations. For example, they have a candle that serves as an advent calendar and they light it a little bit every day until it's the 25th of December. I think that's really cute and this year I'm going to buy one. A tradition that I think is really interesting is when you turn 25, if you don't have a partner, your friends play a prank on you by covering you with cinnamon and when you hit 30 if you still don't have a partner your friends will cover you with pepper yeah another tradition i've noticed especially in june is basically recent graduated from college right around the city like dancing and drinking and celebrating the fact that they handed their studies. I think that's really cool. Next question. What's the most surprising or unexpected thing about Danish culture you have discovered? One of the Danish culture aspects that I most enjoy is their deep appreciation for the hygge concept. And I'm really sorry if I'm not saying this correctly, but hygge, it's like a unique word that does not have an equivalent in other languages but is all about coziness and a warm atmosphere it's wrapping yourself in a very warm blanket whether you're sipping a hot cocoa by the fireplace or simply just enjoying the small pleasures of life and i really really love that concept 
about the unexpected tradition. There's one where babies take their naps outside in their uh, strollers. When you walk around in Denmark or other Nordic countries, you'll often see babies sleeping in their strollers. Even in the cold weather, parents can go to the coffee shop while their babies sleep outside without any worries. In fact, you may also see special places just for that purpose in buildings. It's a bit unusual, but it's very common here. Another question. How have you adapted to the Danish lifestyle and what do you enjoy the most? My adaptation is still a work in process about the Danish lifestyle. Denmark and Portugal are uh, really different. For example, I really admire how the Danes try to enjoy the day and wake up really earlier to get all the work done, leaving plenty of time to enjoy the rest of the daylight, to have fun with their families and friends. I struggle a little bit with mornings, I'm not gonna lie, but that's something that I really want to adopt for my routine as well. Next question. What challenges have you faced during your transition to life in Denmark? So, Without doubt that meeting new people has been one of my biggest struggles. As I mentioned in my first video, I'm a social butterfly and I really like to socialize with new people. But as I already said too in this video, people here are a little bit reserved in the first moment. I would say that's one of my biggest struggles here, meeting new people. Next question. Have you made any close friends in Denmark? So, as you may have noticed, no. Next question. Any funny or embarrassing moments adapting to life in Denmark? Yes, I've got some hilarious stories about the adaptation here in Denmark because I don't understand Danish. There was a time where suddenly, in our house, all of the food that we cooked was spicy. I even accused my husband of sneaking spice uh, in the pans while I was cooking but no, it turns out that I brought some spicy spray on olive oil like this one but it was like a spicy version of it yeah <laughs> couldn't read the label on it and turns out it was a spicy olive oil <laughs> after one month of always eating spicy food I discovered what was it and... Next question! What have been your biggest challenge about living in a different country? One expected challenge has been an intense homesickness, especially for the comfort of Portuguese cuisine. Of course, I also miss a lot my family in Portugal. And you know what? It's funny how being away from Portugal made me appreciate even more my own country. So that, a word that only exists in Portuguese and it means the feeling of missing something dearly. And this has also been one of the biggest challenges I have been facing here because I was not expecting to miss my home country this much. Next question. How much do you make while working in Denmark? And what's the minimum <laughs> wage there? Well, <laughs> it's really tricky for me to answer that but i can tell you that here in denmark there is not minimum wage <laughs> concept instead they usually figure out wages through agreements between worker groups and employers in different job areas well that's all for today i really hope you enjoy this q a session about denmark and about my perspective as an immigrant living here if you have any more questions feel free to share them with me and if you have any interesting video suggestions you'd like to see on this channel feel free to share them too as you already know subscribe give this video a thumbs up and engage with all those youtuber activities if you'd like follow me on instagram i post things there daily sending you a virtual hug and i'll see you in the next one bye